I first would like to thank APAC for giving me this great honor to um, deliver the first David Cooper Memorial Lecture um, to all of you here. Um, because I believe that um, each one of you in the audiences here um, must have had some connections to Professor David Cooper in certain ways, which have brought you here <coughs> in this room. <coughs> And the topics that I'm going to cover during my talk today include we know how to end AIDS. And to touch a bit on the best practices um, on HIV testing, HIV treatment and prevention. And then to end by um, discuss about some common challenges in ending AIDS in our region. By saying ending AIDS, that usually sounds very simple, ending AIDS. Um, however, what we need to do is that we would need to know, know the facts about HIV AIDS. We need to talk, talk a lot, talk widely about HIV AIDS as well as strategies to end HIV AIDS so that HIV AIDS become normalized and um, the strategies to end HIV AIDS get um, um, rolled out um, as quickly as possible and in full scale. Whether that strategies be test early, test frequently, or treat immediately if positive, or PrEP or PEP right away if tested negative. To end AIDS, we actually need to look at two sides of the double-sided cascade, the prevention side and the treatment side. On the treatment side, we would want to see as many people living with HIV um, start on treatment and get virally suppressed as, as many people as possible. But on the prevention side, we also would like to see as many people use as many HIV prevention tools um, as possible and stay negative forever. But in order to get into this um, cascade, either side of the cascade, do you need an entry point, which is HIV testing. And we have started to see few big cities where they, they have already reached the 90, 90, 90 targets of the UNAIDS. Um, and we gradually learned from them that only 90, 90, 90 is not enough. We really need PrEP in order to truly see the reduction in new um, HIV cases. Um, and this is all the same um, strategies of frequent and early HIV testing. Treat immediately and then PrEP. Professor David Cooper was the co-PI with Professor um, Andrew Grulick in this Epic New South Wales studies. And um, it is um, Professor David Cooper, through leadership, political leadership and scientific leadership, which has um, brought um, high level of government support for PrEP in New South Wales, as well as have uh, brought a large donation of PrEP drug um, in order to get the study started from um, Gilead. But in New South Wales, it is not simply just this rapid, targeted, large-scale PrEP rollout to gain bisexual men, which has brought the number of new HIV cases down. But it is actually a combination of many things, a combination of decades-long um, innovative LGBT um, communities, social media campaign on ending AIDS. It is um, the active commitment from the government, to, from the Ministry of, of, of New South Wales, of Ministry of Health in New South Wales, and plus a very supportive network of gay-friendly sexual health clinics in New South Wales. And lastly, plus a positive um, consensus um, towards PrEP among health professionals. All these combinations together um, has brought the new HIV cases in New South Wales down. So here, you want to end it, you choose it your way, whether that being using condoms every time, or take PrEP daily, or getting achieved um, suppressed viral load. And it's not, not only in New South Wales that we have seen this large HIV epidemic in gain by sexual men. Um, we have seen growing HIV epidemic among men who have sex with men, transgender women, in many other countries in our region. Um, the Philippines, for example, during 2010 to 2016, 81% of new HIV cases occurred in MSM and bisexual men. And please note that these data um, do not disaggregate the number from the proportion from transgender women. 
So if we learned from New South Wales, we would see that the serious engagement of key populations are the key factor to the success of the program. And now we have this term, key population-led health services, or KPLHS, that we use to advocate for the concept of having KP leadership in designing HIV services. And that would be services that are needs-based, demand-driven, and client-centered. And these are the concepts that will form through partnership between uh, community-based organizations and public health facilities. In this model, the um, KP lay providers are trained, have their capacity intensively built to provide certain services, whether that being HIV testing, um, dispensing PrEP or PEP or ART, in order to close the service gaps that we commonly see in conventional healthcare settings, such as inconvenient clinic hours or negative um, judgmental attitudes of healthcare providers. In Vietnam, HIV testing by KP lay providers has gained trust among MSM clients, and it has also demonstrated high positive yield at almost 7%, as well as a very high um, referral rates for confirmation and for treatment. In Thailand, HIV testing um, delivered by trained um, KP lay providers um, did not all, all, um, only demonstrate high HIV prevalence and high linkage to care, but also demonstrated that the KPLHS model can also identify high incidence population, including MSM, male sex worker, transgender women, transgender sex workers. And these are populations who can be reached effectively by KP communities and are certainly the prime targets uh, for PrEP services. So in this KPLHS model, we can see that the roles of KP communities can be expanded from the conventional ones of just going out distributing educational materials, um, distributing condoms and lubricants to something that is more innovative, such as providing HIV, counseling and testing, dispensing PrEP for those who tested negative, dispensing ART for those who tested um, positive, and also retaining them. This is very important. You have to retain people in the programs and the KP lay providers are the best person who can help retain HIV, both HIV positive and HIV negative people into the treatment and prevention programs. And it's not only the conventional HIV testing that can be de delivered successfully by um, KP lay providers. HIV self-testing itself can also be delivered successfully by KPLHS. Um, with very high positive yield and also a very successful linkage to confirmation and to ART in both Vietnam and in Laos. However, policy-wise, if you look at the um, lay provider HIV testing policy in our region, you can see that there are only two countries where the um, HIV testing by lay providers are supported by uh, national policy. Looking at the HIV self-testing policy, that's even worse. None of the countries in our region has the self-testing policy that has been implemented. Some countries has a policy um, in development. Some country has policy um, that is already been developed but has not yet been implemented. Thailand, sadly, you can see here on the map, has something that is called unknown status of HIV self-testing policy. So we need to get more serious about HIV testing because we know that it is the entry point into both prevention and treatment um, um, side of the cascade. So now let's move to the treatment side of the cascade. We are all very familiar with um, that treatment is prevention. Treatment should be uh, given at any CD4 count and undetectable equals untransmittable given that you test for viral load um, frequently enough but have we been able to start ART as quickly as possible? Or are we still allowing treatment gaps to happen just because we are not comfortable with uh, the task shifting concept or with the differentiated service delivery concept? Many countries here shown in this slide are doing better and better in achieving the first 90 target. 
However, the second 90 target is the worst, and it's 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 worst. It's 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 not good in um, all of these countries, and it resulted in uh, just only half or less than half of all PLHIV in our countries who had achieved suppressed viral load. So started in July last year, the Thai Red Cross Anonymous Clinic um, seriously piloted this same-day ART um, service. Um, and in this model, the, our clinic, the Thai Red Cross Anonymous Clinic, acts as a same-day ART initiation hub, which means that um, any clients coming into our clinic tested HIV positive or be referred from other KPLHS um, testing sites will be um, prescribed with two weeks supply of ART right away on that day that they um, get diagnosed with HIV. And um, this is done after rolling out um, tuberculosis with symptoms and chest x-ray and rolling out cryptococcal meningitis by physical exam and cryptococcal antigen if needed. But within the um, 10 week after HIV diagnosis, these clients will then be referred out to their longer term um, ART care at their registered or their preferred hospitals with help from our um, navigators. And you can see here in this slide that over a 10-month period, we have more than 1,000 people who started ART under this same-day ART service. 80% of them had their ART started on the exact same day of their HIV diagnosis. Another 8% a few days later, one to two days later. And another 9% by day seven after um, getting their HIV diagnosis. Retention is above 90%, both at month three and month six after ART initiation, with almost 95% viral load suppression um, at month six. So all these data together demonstrated that same-day ART is feasible. It's the concept that is feasible in countries like us, countries in our region. However, if you look at the ART policy in our region, again, we still have many countries in our region where the ART eligibility criteria is still based on CD4. CD4 count less than 500 or even CD4 count less than 350. So here, we also need to do better. Now let's move to the prevention side of the cascade. We now know that we have um, substantial number of HIV prevention tools, but have we been using this very effectively? Are we now ready to task shift the role of providing PrEP, dispensing PrEP and PEP to personnel who are not doctors, like nurses, who are the key um, personnel leading to the success of the Epic New South Wales in um, Australia, or to lay providers who are trained and qualified to dispense PrEP and PEP like what we are doing in Thailand? So in Thailand, we have this Princess PrEP program, which is the program where PrEP is delivered to um, the clients by trained KP lay providers. And it has proved to be the most successful PrEP service delivery model so far in our country, with um, more than half of all PrEP users in the country access PrEP through this program. PrEP delivered by KP lay providers. 80% of them are MSM, 14% transgender women, three quarters of them access PrEP um, in Bangkok. From this graph, we can see that the PrEP uptake started to take off only in the third year of implementation. And you can see 2,000 something people, PrEP users, access PrEP through this program, while another 2,000 or so um, also access PrEP outside of this program, either through the fee-based services in some private clinics or um, through other demonstration projects. So altogether, we have around 4,000 to 5,000 PrEP users in our country. You may think this is good, because in your country, you may only have 1,000 people on PrEP or 300 people on PrEP, but for us, it's really bad. We have been implementing PrEP for more than, for almost four years, but we still only have 4,000 people on PrEP in the country. We know that from um, size estimation, we have around 1 million MSM and transgender people 
in the country. And with the very conservative estimation of at least 20% of MSM and transgender women being at high risk for HIV, we would love to see 200,000 people on PrEP. And now we only have 4,000 out of 200,000, which equals only 2% PrEP coverage among individuals at high risk for HIV. And this level of coverage would not bring us anything near to seeing any impact from PrEP on HIV epidemic in our country. And we hope that by October this year, um, PrEP would be free. And this is still uh, fingers crossed um, for MSM and transgender women under the universal health coverage in the country. But we still don't know whether that uh, will or will not boost up PrEP uptake in our country. Uh, in this program, we use same-day PrEP flow, uh, which means that anyone coming into the clinic test negative, wanted to start PrEP, will then get one bottle of PrEP out of the clinic with them to start right away on that day. And then one or two days after that, the clinic staff would just call the clients to um, inform them about their creatinine um, clearance level um, or their hepatitis serology level. And only less than 1% of these clients who then have um, abnormal kidney function will be um, advised to discontinue PrEP and then come back um, to get referral for further investigation. This is uh, done in order to close any gaps uh, possible. In Taiwan, the Taiwan CDC um, has led this PrEP demo project in five hospitals. And although the project had to stop early um, and um, only enroll 300 out of 1,000 expected due to an attack by the anti-LGBT group in the country, this um, project so far has generated very rich and interesting data, especially around the use of on-demand PrEP and the acquisition of PrEP outside of the country by Taiwan MSM. In Vietnam, we have seen a very rapid increased PrEP uptake in the country through the fee-based um, PrEP um, service delivered by KPCSO, mainly through the public, um, to the private clinics. And this again um, emphasized the need to engage seriously key populations in the design of the program. <coughs> so the key feature of the Vietnam um, program is the KP co-creation in PrEP service design, demand generation, and research. Malaysia just launched their My Prep project, aiming to enroll 150 MSM um, and test three different service delivery models: one through the university hospital, another one through the private clinic, and another one um, through community healthcare clinic led by PT Foundation. The project Preppy in the Philippines, led by Love Yourself and Research Institute for Tropical Medicine already completed their enrollment of 250 MSM and has started to see a growing number of now more than 3,000 MSM who has been put in the wait list for PrEP. So here again, it has proved that PrEP demand can be generated. PrEP service can be delivered successfully in this KP community care setting. Looking at this map, you can see that all those great examples of PrEP movements in our region are coming from countries where TDF and FTC has not yet, has not yet been registered successfully as PrEP. So this is to demonstrate that serious actions can be taken to bring PrEP out to those who are in need while all these regulatory issues are being sorted out. So you don't have to, to, to wait until PrEP is approved or registered in your country before you start to do something to, to deliver uh, these, these life-saving prevention um, tools to um, those who are in need. And so by listening to me until this point, I believe you can see and you can feel um, that countries in our region have been learning so much from each other. And this learning, this sharing of experiences would not have happened without Treat Asia. And by looking at these um, two photos taken almost two decades apart, you can see that some key person in our region always sit in the front row. <laughs> some of you who used to be in the back rows 20 years ago now has moved graciously to help fill in the first row as well as many new faces 
young generation, young blood, who helped to fill in the back rows for us. So this is, this is truly a, a, a um, network um, established to help um, 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 create the, the true collaborations um, between countries in our region. And we know um, that by teaching, coaching, and mentoring, these all are key factors in the successful collaborations um, among countries in our region. And these um, are mainly done either um, over a dinner with a glass of wine or a glass of beer, or in a clinic room, looking at someone's touches all day long. But we are always doing this with happiness, with joy, and with respect. The recent initiatives by the Kirby Institute to build local capacity in Indonesia and Myanmar through Hati and March are also very, very impressive. And these are local capacity building that is needed, that is needed in the country in order to end AIDS and other infectious diseases. But all of these efforts um, would not bring us any closer to the ending AIDS goal <coughs> if we do not address stigma and discrimination seriously. We have to do all this together. And there are uh, many um, um, more, be, more visible um, young generation PLHIV or PLHIV communities who are ready, who are willing um, to do this with us, uh, with innovations. And we are all, all, all very grateful um, to them. And I would like to end by um, showing you some common challenges in ending AIDS. And, and I would like to call this um, conventional challenges um, ending AIDS in our region because this, this has caused dysfunctional collaborations between academia, communities, and policy makers. We have seen too much ego among medical professionals, too much dependency on data from prestigious um, RCTs and cost-effectiveness um, studies, which somehow slow down and isolate academia from these collaborations. <coughs> PLHIV communities, who used to be a strong ART advocates, whose minds are open enough to also advocate for PrEP and other HIV prevention uh, modalities beyond condoms and lubricants are not common. Policy makers, politicians who can be our champion, talking about needles, syringes, PrEP, PEP, task shifting, are almost non-existing. And it would be only if we work together to remove these barriers that we can achieve that ending AIDS goal together. So in conclusion, although treat all is still not true for a few countries in our region with large HIV epidemics, we need to aim for same day ART. And even PrEP is not yet available for free outside of demonstration projects, we also need to aim for same-day PrEP. And we know that HIV testing, treatment, and prevention services provided by KP lay providers are not professionally or legally acceptable at this time. So it means that we need to work much, much, much harder in order to demedicalize HIV testing, demedicalize ART, and demedicalize PrEP. And lastly, the South-South collaboration will likely be the most culturally, religiously acceptable and sustainable way to end it together in the Asia Pacific. I would like to end by thank all the wonderful, lovely, enthusiastic funder, collaborators, and colleagues um, whose names are listed on this slide. Thank you very much. <laughs>